Hello. Welcome back to the channel. And this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings, and we generally like to talk a lot of bollocks about tabletop gaming in general. And in this video, we're going to be running down 10 things that really make my blood boil in board games. Be warned, I may lose my temper in this video. So you might want to use headphones or not watch at all if you are a lightweight snowflake. So remember, if you're new here, then please consider subscribing to this channel with the like button or that YouTube bullshit. See you after this. Bollocks. So number one on this list, 10 things that get my fucking blood boiling in board games is flappy bloody rule books, yeah? You know the ones I mean, the ones that are the size of the sodding box. And there's been a movement away from these sort of coffin boxes of the early to late 2000s. And we've moved towards these sort of square boxes. And for some bizarre reason, games publishers still think it's a good idea to print the rules on the sale of a sodding galleon. And this is true, right? If you look at the first edition of Jamaica, for instance, then they decided to print the rules on a sodden treasure map right and it is literally like opening up an ordnance survey map and i'm convinced that if you play jamaica outdoors you will end up in the cayman islands right not for tax evasion purposes but just because a strong gust of wind will have you following the jet stream right so yeah big flappy rule books that you need octopi hands to take care of is a massive no-no and it still fucks me off today so the second thing that we don't like in board games is something that exists in this tiny little dungeon of mine today, right? I'm sure that I could squeeze in another 2,000 board games into this room if it wasn't for the empty bloody space in all of these boxes, right? You know the games I am on about, right? They come in a normal size box and you think, yeah, this is going to be packed to the rafters with components, right? You open the box and it's a pack of cards, a one page rule sheet and a couple of tokens, right? And the rest of it is taken up by the entire oxygen supply of the International Space Station, right? Why? Why do they think that you want empty space when you need as much shelf space as possible, right? Could it be that games publishers are stupid? I don't know, quite possibly. So the first thing that fucks me off about board games is another rule book anomaly, right? It's when the components aren't printed on the same page as the setup or when pictures of the components aren't mentioned at all. They seem to think that you are either telekinetic or you found the missing fragments of the Rosetta Stone under your bed, but you have to keep flipping backwards and forwards from one page to the other, wondering why the hell they just didn't print the name of the card on the card back, right? Fantasy Flight, I'm looking at you. If you've ever played Imperial Assault, you will know that a lot of cards have different symbols on the backs. It's just a bloody nightmare trying to figure out which card is which when they could have just put Imperial whatever on one or Rebel shit on the other, right? It's not hard, is it? So yeah, this grey beard, that's a result of that game, which, funnily enough, I burnt. So the next thing we fucking hate about board games is when you have a multitude of punch boards, but they don't give you no sodding baggies to stick all these tokens in. One of the worst offenders of this is Diverft or Shipyard, right? If you've ever endured the unboxing and unpunching of Shipyard, you will know from first-hand experience, empirical evidence, if I may, of how migraines start. There is about 7,000 million punch boards in Shipyard. There's tiny little intricate tokens with like funnels on and propellers and stuff like that and they don't give you anything to store them in they just give you a box full of air so once you've punched them all out you gotta go hunting for baggies everybody knows that just when you need a set of baggies you have run out right so then you have to toss all this shit back in the box go and get some baggies and then try and sort it out again yeah so publishers if you are listening if i'm not shouting into the grand canyon include more than enough baggies in your sodding games yeah stop being so tight costs a couple of pence doesn't it so the next thing that we can't stand about board games when you spend 40 or 50 quid on a game and part of the board isn't even bloody used power grid is a great example of this you're never ever going to use all parts of the board and that makes me feel short changed right i like value for money i like to use every last little bit of the game yeah and when power grid tells me that i'm not going to use that section of the board i've got to blank it off a you got to remember not to go there and b i paid for the sodden board right i want to use it kemmer is another offender of this if you've got a certain play account then you ain't going to use half the board and it just makes the game feel sort of empty or half baked when you're not using all of the stuff right it's my right as a human being to utilize everything that i have paid for right so stop doing it if you're going to make a board for less than the play account then include another fucking board right 
So the next thing, really get some more tits about ball games is uneven turn numbers. You know the games, yeah? You're playing a game, you're planning ahead, and then suddenly the game ends just because somebody met a victory condition. And they won because they had one more turn than you for no goddamn reason at all, right? You could have won on the tiebreak on the next turn had there been an even number of turns, right? Scythe is a good example of this. There's uneven turn numbers in that great game, yeah? We have experienced this multiple times where somebody has won on their last turn. They had 12 turns and you only had 11, right? This was sort of fixed in one of the expansions where you play for 20 turns, right? But isn't it just easier to say that everybody has the same amount of turns? But then again, who said your miserable existence was going to be fair, right? So the next piece of shit thing that grates on my psyche board games is unmitigated random die rolls and card draws, right? It's sort of like the insta-death thing in fight and fantasy game books, yeah? You're just plodding along, doing what you got to do, and then suddenly you fall into a pit trap and die. It's the same thing in some board games. Like if you take the recent football manager game, 11, this is guilty of unmitigated random die rolls, right? You finish the match, you think you've won the game, you're ecstatic, you are pushing your team up the league through your own skill, right? Maybe. Then you roll the post-match die and your star striker gets a double injury through no fault of your own fucking hate this i absolutely fucking hate unmitigated die rolls yeah these mechanics were fashioned by satan himself it's as if game developers deliberately shit in your front porch and you unwittingly step in it right stop doing it just stop doing it right there's no need for it the only reason that you lot do it is because you're fucking lazy and you can't be fucking arsed right so if i see one more unmitigated die roll mechanic any single game from now till the day I die, then I'm going to hunt you down. I'm going to force feed you a dog shit sandwich. All right. So the next thing, there is a lot of things on this list, but the next thing that I really hate about board games is the way that manufacturers wrap up cards, right? How many times have you tried to open a deck of cards trying to find a little flappy bit of plastic, yeah? Probably doesn't exist. Or if it does, it's in a parallel fucking universe. So you end up using your teeth. You try and bite open the pack of cards and that don't work. So you get a knife, you try and carefully slice the packet open and then the knife slips, slices into the cards, yeah? What we're gonna do is we're gonna press in to create these two flaps. I don't know why they can't get this right yet. It's been something that's bugged me since the 1970s. It's almost like it's a little mini game that manufacturers play, yeah? Let's see how many people we can annoy with card wrappings. It's a bit like watching an elderly person trying to open a jar of pasta sauce, right? It just ain't gonna happen. Let's do the bottom. So I'm hoping that one day in the future, I will find emancipation for this scourge of the board gaming community. So the next thing that really annoys me about the board gaming industry is cardboard that falls apart, right? This is usually the case when you're talking about constructing pointless gimmicky crap in board games. Yeah, if you think about the pyramid in the first edition of Camel Up, okay, it's a dice shaker, but you don't really need it, yeah? That little flappy bit that's connected to the elastic band, that has broken, right? It got fucked up within a couple of plays, yeah? And then if you think about the absolute nightmare that was Potion Explosion first edition with the cardboard tray, I defy anybody not to have wanted to kill a small animal when constructing that lump of shite. Poor quality cardboard wants to maybe grab the nearest fish slice and then go out on a rampage, yeah? Literally makes my blood boil, but not as much as this last thing. So the final thing really fucks me off about the board gaming industry. It's something that really, really annoys me. It's probably the thing that annoys me the most about the board gaming industry, right? And that is paid previews, right? People are money grabbing bastards, right? It seems like the influencer community is now just a bunch of fucking adverts, yeah? Every time you stick a video on YouTube, yeah, there's someone who's got their hands in the pies getting paid to tell you that a game is good when in fact it is a pile of dog shit. For fuck's sake, people play these Kickstarter prototypes, yeah, that are just basically sort of print and play shit with the mechanics not even ironed out half-baked bollocks telling you it's the best game ever so that you back it on kickstarter and you have to wait two years to get the final product and by that time these people that have played the prototype once are already telling you to buy the next fucking thing and the price has jumped from the 100 quid that you paid for wokehaven to 250 quid for wokehaven version 2.0 it's just the same fucking game placed into a different setting placed in space or placed into a fucking tundra i'm just sick to the back teeth of watching youtube videos 
seeing these biased twats play the game once, get paid, tell you that this ball game is the best thing since sliced bread when really they're lying bastards. So there you go, it's 10 things out of 17,000 things that really get on my nerves about ball games, yeah. I have held back a little bit because there might be children watching this. So maybe one day I will actually post a not safe for work version of this top 10 list. But until then, remember, if you're new here, then please consider subscribing to this channel with the like button and all that YouTube bullshit. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.